Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Ford Mondeo 3. The body has become much stronger and more resistant to rust in comparison with its predecessor. Serious corrosion manifests itself only after 10-15 years of operation and often in places hidden from the eyes. The exterior panels and most cars hold up perfectly well into old age, even if no special care has been taken. There are also specimens with surface corrosion and numerous paintwork problems, but most often these are the consequences of minor injuries that were not healed in time, and also work in a very bad climate, parking in best garages. Such machines are rare and you can usually find a flaw in their biographies. For most of the remaining instances, the weak points are the front suspension struts, seals, door buttons, rear arches, subframe attachment points and the subframes themselves. Yes, these massive parks are at risk here. The first price traces are usually worth looking for in the depths of the seams of the engine compartment, but the appearance of the car can be flawless for a long time. The door design is prone to sagging and the lift back also has weak points in the rear of the body. It is worth checking the condition of the body elements under the upholstery, they can crack corny, you will need welding. Small cracks most often manifest themselves in metal cracking or irregularities not related to the operation of the suspensions and it is difficult to detect them. Of regularly breaking components, all the outer plastic, especially the wheel arch, arch liners. But the bumpers are too fragile here, mainly in a light frost. If in the summer a blow can pass without consequences, then a blow to the same place in winter will definitely cause numerous fractures. The foam buffers in the bumpers are often jammed, and the plastic cannot withstand deformation. The interior is very good and the body tolerates age better. The seats are the hardest, the lumbar support often breaks, and in general the frame is rather weak. The fabric of the driver's seat is prone to tearing. But the trims begin to wear off only after more than 200,000 km of runs, and the pads of the handles, which are easy to replace, will be the first to give up. Dying climate displays are typical for almost all aged cars. Model is no exception. Electrical problems didn't pass the car. The quality of the wiring suffers here, and you need to check the condition of the connectors regularly. The wiring of the cabin suffers from the accumulation of the moisture in the carpets, the engine compartment wiring crumbles due to the heat. Filler ABS sensors and wiring under the bottom of the car. Not too often, but the problems are varied. On cars with ESP, the steering wheel position sensors can be thrown up. On almost all cars, after 5-7 to seven years, the outside air temperature sensor fails. The climate control after that begins to go crazy. The generator is not a model of reliability, it almost always requires replacement after 6-7 to seven years of operation. Its bearings and rectifier are rather weak. The gasoline engine control system contains a conventional ignition module and there are spark plug wires. You shouldn't forget about them, they can easily fail. It is recommended to change the candles at least once every 40,000 km. The radiator pans and the wiring should also be revised at the same frequency. Not the most reliable steering rack and power steering pump pleases with the low replacement price. Yes, knocking would usually lead to a progressive leak in a short time. Yes, you need to be very careful to break the grandfather's prohibition, do not turn the wheels on the spot, otherwise both the pump and the rack will suffer. And even more so, do not hold the rail on the limiter for an extra second. But the price of the item in the region of 10,000 rubles is quite high even for a poor owner, and on good roads it can cover more than 100,000 km. Of course, the result is not outstanding, but quite acceptable. Dependents are also quite reliable. At the front, in the red zone, the springs and strut supports. The rear southern block of the front arm is relatively inexpensive to change, and the bolt joint is reliable. But in any case, the node resource under normal operating conditions is not less than 60-100,000 km before the first bulkhead. If the repair is done in a complex, then it will not bother you. The springs are also weak at the back, they often break off the extreme returns. And the multilinker also has not very strong levers, and only for the longitudinal one there are native repair kits. The rest are also repaired, but the metal of the road is too thin for reliable repair. The station wagons, by the way, have a completely different suspension, stronger with a completely different set of components. Those who like to load the car to the fullest often have a rear suspension only 50,000 km before overhaul with a replacement of one or two levers, but most owners fortunately drive empty, and the resource is quite acceptable, comparable to the resource of the front suspension. The braking system is characterized by weak calipers, especially at the rear, not very reliable line pipes and frequent electrical problems with the sensors and the control unit. The calipers are corny sour due to not very successful enters and thick brake pads. Here you can see the consequences of an attempt to reduce the cost of operation. Brake lines are not very well protected and corrode at around 10 years of age. It is dangerous, but not too expensive if replaced in a timely manner. 
The repair is simple, the flexible copper tube fits perfectly in the place of the old steel one. Also, brake discs are prone to wobbling and uneven wear, but again a lot of inexpensive not original makes this not too important. Absolutely familiar for mechanical boxes of the MTX75 and WMT6 series do not have any special problems and are extremely reliable. Even on the charged versions of ST22, the box works perfectly. The situation is different with machine guns. The old 4-speed automatic Ford CD4E, which is found mainly on pre-styling cars, is not at all a stronghold of reliability. Of course, the box has been produced since 1994, but it has a lot of weaknesses. First of all, it is not the most successful oil pump, which can easily fail with understandable consequences. Weak solenoids in the weld body, not the most successful chain in the drive, and the constructive is not like icing or jet coal. The double drum also breaks regularly. Spare parts are inexpensive, and they know the box fell for repair, they make it easy. But this doesn't mean that the repair will be inexpensive. The standard price of any problem with the automatic transmission applies here too. For 70,000 troubles, you will be promised everything is zero. It will break down again rather soon, on average the resource after a good bulkhead doesn't exceed 150,000 km, but often it turns out to be three times less. Most of the restyled cars have a much more interesting automatic transmission under the hood, the Jetco 5F31J, a JF506E. Such a box was installed on Nissan and Mitsubishi of Japanese and American assemblies, as well as on some Volkswagens where it bears the name of 9A. This 5-speed gearbox is one of the most budget-friendly designs, but that doesn't mean it's bad. The main problems are early wear of rubber piston seals and clogging of the pressure control solenoids with dirt. With runs over 200, the entire set of solenoids and the well body plate are often changed. Many problems are caused by overheating due to a weak heat exchanger. There are enough other weak points built in mechanics and in control hydraulics, but in general the design is quite successful. With careful operation, it will almost always cover 150 or even 200,000 km, even without modifications. And it is convenient to repair. For fans of traffic lights races, a differential is also at risk, and its breakdown usually leads to a complete failure of the automatic transmission due to the destruction of the case. Like many fast speeds, it is strongly recommended to install an external enlarged automatic transmission radiator from a four step, for example, and an external filter with a magnetic trap. Fans of contract parts will also be interested in other information. On Mazda, the box was called JA5AEL and was installed on Mazda 5, 6, MPV, and Atenza. Apart from the name, the differences are minimal. Most of the engines on the Mondeo are inline fours with a volume of 1.8 and 2.0 liters from the well deserved Mazda L series family. Chain motors with a good design, good boosting capabilities, and at the same time, extremely inexpensive. Yes, the seals are weak here, the crankcase ventilation system, the throttle is not very reliable, it is prone to leaks, the ignition system is old fashioned, and the intake is often leaky due to a branch of weak connections. From injector veins to inconvenient clamps. The intake manifold has one very unpleasant feature. The lens shift steps at high mileage can fall into the cylinder, causing 8 valve damage, or even cylinder seizure and piston damage. In practice, the motor successfully passes its 200 km in any mode, and if the owner wishes, it can swing 350-500 km. The timing chain will require replacement at about 200,000 km, which is almost a record for the latest generation chain motors. From far-fetched troubles, one can also recall the keyless landing of the timing starts, which slightly increases the requirements for the qualifications of the repairman. Tightening the fastening bolt or an incorrect tightening torque will lead to stainless red after a phase violation. In practice, this is rarely the case, but for many, an unpleasant surprise will be the lack of repair dimensions of the pistons. If a major overhaul is necessary, it is recommended to simply replace the shot block since it is inexpensive. The engine compartment wiring is also not very reliable, but it will almost certainly hold out for 10 years and with light repairs and all 15. It rarely requires a complete replacement, and fires in the engine compartment of Omondeo rarely occurs. Overheating due to unsuccessful design of the pipes of the coolant system pumps, however, this is more for 2.5 and 3.0 liter engines, occur regularly. They also often criticize not the most successful firmware for 1.8 motors, because of which they are prone to floating revolution per minute, and the motor can even suddenly stall if the throttle well is a little dirty. Gasoline V6 with a volume of 2.5 and 3.0 liters are much less common. In essence, motors are very similar to inline force, as are their problems. Their origin is from the Noble. As I said, the pedigree comes from the Jaguar motors of the compact AJ V6 series, but in the creative processing of the Japanese. There are practically no weak points. There is a good timing resource, compactness power. As with any budget car, the difficulty of maintaining the V6 on the model is inflated. In practice, everything is not so expensive and not easy. 
The resource is even higher than that of the inline pores, 1.8 and 2.0, but there are more tendencies to overheating and less likely to notice problems before a critical moment. Diesel engines really make an ambiguous impression. Against the background of the reliability of Mondial gasoline engines, which is quite rare for modern cars, the diesel looks pale. Few people expect frequent problems with fuel equipment and associated burnout of pistons and valves. At the same time, no one cancelled the standard diesel difficulties due to poor diesel fuel, and even most of the European engines will be equipped with a particular filter. Injectors are expensive and require mandatory prescription. Minor troubles can turn into very large expenses. And low viscosity Ford oil is not recommended for motors. If the recommended SAE30 is poured into them, then the chances of rotated liners increase many times over. A minimum of a C as AE40 or even as AE50. But the motors are economical and very logical. But again, any piston problem, and now the prospects looms to change the entire shot block. All in all, saving on diesels can come at a very high cost. So, edging TDCI are the choice for those who are at risk averse. And this information about the problems of Portman Dietary is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.